Today is the 30th of November 2011. We are at the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs, New York. My name is Wayne Clark. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and date and place of birth, please? My full name is William Joseph Callahan. Uh, where do you want? What else do you want? Uh, your date and place of birth. My birth is 3 March 10th, 1926. And whereabouts were you born? Brooklyn, New York. And did you go to school in Brooklyn? I went to school in Brooklyn. Every all schools, grammar school through high through college. Oh, okay. And uh, what was it like growing up in Brooklyn? Wonderful. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> now, what did your your father do for a living? My father died when I was only ten years old. Oh. So he worked for a phone company. Okay. And where were you when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? I was home on Sunday afternoon. I heard on the radio. That's where we get all the news, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then my two brothers went into service, and I went in. Okay. Now you went into the service uh, in 1961. No, 1944. You got the wrong one. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. Jeez. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I apologize for no that. No problem. <laughs> All right. And, and uh, were you drafted or? No, I, I enlisted in the Navy. Okay. I was 17 when I was turned in. And what made you pick the Navy? I didn't want to go into the Army. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was so. Okay. I didn't want to get into it, be a foot soldier. And uh, was that your first time away from home? Yeah, I, was, I went to Samson, uh, took the, se the subway over to Head Station and got on the train there and went up to Samson, New York here. Yeah. Oh, I see. And boot camp was only three weeks then. Three weeks? Yeah. Now, what did you learn at Samson? How to get along with people primarily, you know. <laughs> okay. And once you completed boot camp, where did you go next? Then I went to uh, 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 Naval Hospital up in up at Samson, and then from there I went down to Philadelphia. And in Philadelphia, I transferred to the Marines. Okay. And you say you transferred? Did well, they, I was. The Marines don't have their own medical corps, so mm -hmm. they get the Navy. Okay. And when it's like, it's like a transfer, you change uniforms and everything. Okay. So I had two uniforms, one, one a sailor and one is a marine. And what was your training like? I went through all the training marines did. Plus we had to take medical training right. too. Right. Well, your medical training, what was? Well, that was teaching in all first aid and you know, mm -hmm. the battle conditions and everything, you know? And, and how long was that school? Oh, uh, maybe a month, two months. Everything was short. They needed bodies, you know? Time was... was uh, the essence, really, you know. Mm -hmm. I was lucky. I, I just—if you go to school, you get out of things for a few months. You know. Mm -hmm. That's why I often feel bad about these guys that went to the Vietnam. They f flew them over there. It took—it took me six days to go to cross country by train, mm -hmm. and then another six days to go to Hawaii. That was twelve days. I got a, a cousin. Too. He went to Vietnam. He flew out of New York, he was Vietnam the next day. Mm -hmm. Then he got hit that day and he came back again. Really? Yeah. Wow. So that was, taking time was good, you know. Mm -hmm. Now as a medic, how were you treated? Good, I don't know, no problem. But I, don't, we always have, but I often, I've often heard that the Marines were really protective of their medics. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's because they, we help them, that's all. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't like the hand of feed you, you know? Mm -hmm. No, we, we never, we had, we had a good relationship. Mm -hmm. All right, and when did you go overseas? I went overseas in September 44th. I got back in May of 46th. Okay, and uh, you took off from whereabouts in the States? Oh, San Diego. San Diego. I went to Pendleton, not Southern California. Mm -hmm. And, and from there you went to Hawaii? Yeah, that's, and I didn't go any further. Okay. A lot of fellows I was with ended up going to China and everything. Because I, 
I didn't get picked for that. And you stayed in Hawaii? I stayed in Hawaii until the end of the war, and then we left. Get okay. back here home. All right. And what did uh, what did they have you doing in Hawaii? I worked in a hospital in the, on Maui, and mm -hmm. then I worked in a uh, warehouse in on Oahu. Now, what was your job in the hospital? Well, I was a corpsman there, and it, I did a lot of prostate massages and stitching and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I worked in a surgery ward. Okay. So we did quite a bit of stuff that we you wouldn't do normally, you know. Mm -hmm. So did they keep they must have. Uh, Kept you extremely busy because I know there were oh, a, a lot busy. of wounded Marines. Well, it was, it's, it, guys weren't wounded that much, but uh, the thing is, not that we know where I was anyway. Mm -hmm. And that uh, most of them came in there for circumcisions. Really? They, yeah, come in. Well, they went on a campaign, and you couldn't wash yourself properly, and you end up getting infected and everything. Else. And then they kind of come back and get circumcised. Now, did they did they have any choice in the matter? Or? Oh, well, listen, you get trouble down there, you don't you, you want to take care of it, you know? No, but I mean, was it voluntary or did they... Oh, yeah, oh, it was voluntary. Oh, it wasn't mandatory? No, no. Oh, it wasn't mandatory, no. Okay. All right. But it, it had to watch, it, watch that stuff, it's important. Mm -hmm. but had a lot of uh, circumcision, a lot of teratomas and all that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, once, once uh, a, a fellow went through that operation, were, did they have to stay in the hospital for quite a while? I'd stay in there a week or two weeks. Uh huh. Yeah. And then they were shipped. You're going back and you're going to be living in a tent and a deterioration. You know, it's not the same thing. It's not. They never have more problems, you know? Okay. So they keep them in the hospital and they're clean, you know? Okay. Now, what was life like in Hawaii and you went over in 44? Well, we never got overnight passes just to get. You had to be back on the base at 6 o'clock. Or something. The fight to the leave was. So, like maybe nine o'clock in the morning to six at night. That's it. You know, mm -hmm. never been overnight. No. Huh. There's nobody on the island except the Fourth Marine Division and the Third and Fifth Youth Corps, and that was it. You got to say at about forty thousand people there, all men, and that's where we were. Now, was that the big island of Hawaii you were on? One of them, Maui. Maui. Yeah, that was a big resort. I was going to say, what was Maui like then? I mean, it was, obviously there weren't too many hotels there. No hotels. No hotels? <laughs> no hotels. <laughs> had, had a small town, really, that's about it. Uh -huh. Now, what uh, what was the food like there? We used to eat out once a month on payday. Uh -huh. The rest of the time you start. The, the food, food was terrible. Was it really? Yeah, except when a Marine Corps birthday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, I don't know, what's that other thing called? Easter. It ain't good then. Mm -hmm. but the rest of the time, the food was awful. Okay. That's, what? A, that's, what it, that's how they treated the Marines. They made you miserable, so you go be in one in combat, then you didn't give a shit anymore. Now, uh, what were your living quarters like there? In a tent. In the eight, eight guys in a tent. In a tent? Okay, yeah. so there weren't any uh, permanent barracks there or oh, anything? No, no. On Oahu, I went to Keswood over there. We went to a barracks, but that uh, on Maui it was tents. Okay, so so when you went to Oahu, did you do hospital work then too, or was that at the warehouse? No, that was a warehouse. Okay, now <clears throat> how did you end up getting transferred out of the medical uh, corps? Well, it was still the medical corps. It was a medical storage place. Yeah. Okay. Now, of, of the two jobs, which one did you like the best? I want to give it that time. As long as I can keep alive, that's all I want. Okay. Now, what was your nobody life... Was, nobody was shooting me, so shooting at me. <laughs> what was your life like in Oahu? Yeah, the same as any place else. They had no place to go. Because Oahu was, was a big natural for a lot of us. And there's nothing but sailors and marines and army people there. Uh -huh. That's all it's nothing, not nothing else, you know. I got there after they closed down the bottles, you know. Oh, they closed them down, huh? Yeah, yeah. I heard we were coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But they would have them there. And then my friends and got trip ship to China, that's where they got stationed in the bottle. Hmm. But it's a different world, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, on Hawa Oahu, the warehouse you worked in, how big of a warehouse? Oh, it's a big, oh, 
don't know how to describe it. I mean, it was a big storage area, I okay. should say. All right. It wasn't even, you know, it had a small warehouses, but most of it was a storage area. You know? Now, did, you know, all kinds of medical supplies. Did you operate a forklift or? No, no. I don't know what the hell I was doing there. I ended up taking these guys to the warts off their hands and stuff. Most of because I got the kit and everything else. And really? The doctor told me how to do it, and I did it. Uh huh. So, <laughs> So did, did everybody refer to you as Doc? No, they call you by your name. Did they? Yeah. Now what about, uh, what about entertainment there? Did you have any USO shows or? A lot of card games, that's all. A lot of card games? No, I, I saw one USO show, that's all. Jack Carson was the only one I saw. Okay. And uh, now you were there obviously when the war ended? Yeah. What was, that, what was that like when the war ended? Oh, everybody was happy. A lot of celebration? Well, no celebration, <laughs> everybody was just happy, that's all. Okay. Now, it, it says here you, you weren't discharged till May. May of 1946. Yeah. Now, did you stay in Hawaii all that time? Well, yeah, most of the time I was there. I, went, I was on uh, Maui when the war ended. Mm -hmm. And then I got transferred over to Oahu. Okay. Took my first airplane flight too. Okay. Even after the the war ended, uh, was there still a lot to do, or was things pretty oh, quiet? Yeah, there was a lot of things to do. They kept you busy, yeah, so. Uh huh. They kind of keep busy, otherwise you'd be so spooky, you know. Mm hmm. Did you see a lot of guys coming and going? No, not really. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was in a transit center. And that's where I stayed. That's all. Mm hmm. A lot of people came and left, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, what rank were you at that point? I ended up as a pharmacist mate, three, third class. Okay. I got that by cutting cards, too. <laughs> you want to tell us about that? <laughs> well, there were six of us, but all the same, pretty much the same. And this friend of mine, he, was, he, he went, made the Normandy invasion, and then he made the Iwo Chima. Then he came back and he got purple, he had two purple lots, and all kinds of decorations. And we, we cut the cards and it was a taxing day. He was in the Navy five years. He didn't get above the hospital performance second, first class, you know. Mm -hmm. He thought he should have got it. And I gave it to my friend. So I got the farmers of Spain third place to set next time. Wow. Okay. Now, you were discharged, like we said, in May of 46. Yeah, Little Beach, New York. Okay. So you came back to the States by ship? Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, what was that like coming coming back? Was there any, there wasn't any celebration then or welcoming no, no, home or? No, you're just going home, that's all. It's a yeah. big thing, you yeah. know? Okay. I came in San Francisco, I saw that that was a nice, nice city. I enjoyed that. How'd you get from San Francisco to Lido Beach? By train. By train? Yeah. Was troop, it? Troop train. Troop, troop train, train. Yeah. okay. And you were just that, that took another six days. Yeah. Okay, you were discharged in Lido Beach. Yeah. And then uh, from there you went home to Brooklyn. Yeah, took the train in. Then I took the trolley car from New York, New York, and came over to Williamsburg Bridge and took the trolley car home. Mm-hmm. Were your family happy to see you? Your mom? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. I was the last one to come home. Go home and peace too. Oh, did you did you have any brothers that were in the yeah, service? Yeah, two brothers. Yeah. Okay. They, one, they, one was in the army, and the other was in the navy. And they made it home, all right. Oh yeah. And what what were their names? John and Paul. Are they both living or deceased? No, Paul is still alive. John's gone. Okay. And, and where does Paul live? Garden City, New York. Okay. All right. Now uh, <clears throat> you got home from the service. What was the first thing you did? I went home. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> did you uh, did you look for look for a job or go to school at, at that? I know, I, I, I tried to do twenty club for a while. Oh, okay, all right. And then we walked all over Brooklyn drinking beer at every bar, ten bar I could find. You know. Uh huh. We just walked all over the city. You know. And, uh, and then we went fishing and all, all that stuff. You know? Okay. Now, then I went to St. John's University. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, so obviously you took 
advantage of the GI Bill? Yeah, yeah. And what did you study at St. John's University? Accounting. I'm sorry? Accounting. Accounting, all right. Yeah. So you uh, became an, an accountant? Yeah, I'm an accountant. All right. And you did that as a career? Right, right. And when did you retire? I'm still working. Oh, you are? <laughs> <laughs> I retired three times already. Uh -huh. I'm still doing accounting work. Okay. Are you in business for yourself? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't work for anybody. Mm-hmm. So it's and did you uh, did you get married along the way? Oh yeah, I got married. We had seven children. Oh, so you have a lot of a lot of grandchildren? Yeah, seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Is your wife still living? Oh yeah, she's still living. Yeah. And and her name is Dorothy. All right. We have a good marriage. Great. Now, did you stay in touch with anyone you were in in the service with? No, no, I haven't touched that. No? Anybody. Did you attend any kind of reunions no, at all? No, no, no. Did you join any veterans? I just joined American Legion, that's all. All right. I just joined out a few, maybe 10 years ago. You know? mm -hmm. I think you should belong to something, you know? Mm -hmm. Not that I agree with everything, but they have, have something to say anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, how do you think the service changed or affected your life? you think it had any bearing? Oh, I guess it did. I don't know. I, I really don't know. All right. I was just happy to get out of the war. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you lucked out getting, you know, especially being in the Marine Corps and being oh, a, yeah. trained as a medic and then ending up in Hawaii. I, 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 worked, I worked for the bank before I went into the service. And uh, there's a guy there, he was, he was married and had two kids, and he got drafted after I went in. Mm -hmm. And he made the Normandy invasion and lost both his legs. Oh, jeez. And that was, he was in maybe six months. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I, I was very fortunate. Yeah. So. Now, do you think you would have gone on to college if it hadn't have been for the GI Bill? Oh, yeah. yeah. You think so? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, I think you need an education. That's oh, right. definitely. Now, is there anything uh, we haven't covered that, that you'd like to add? Any, any incidents or... No, no. I made a couple of, uh, we used to practice landings on the, out in California. You go out on the ship overnight and come back the next day, you know? Uh -huh. Climbing up and down the, the rope ladders, the, the Jacob ladders, they were pain in the ass. But that was the, the way they did it, you know? You go from the Higgins boat up to the ship, you know? Uh -huh. And some of those were dangerous too, because a lot of guys got trapped in between this Higgins boat and the oh, ship, boy. you know? So you were you were pretty lucky in that regard. I was regard. lucky there too because one time uh, there was a Higgins boat ahead of me and he capsized and the, the fifteen guys got drowned. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was dangerous work. You know? mm -hmm. And then coming in on the landing, if the coxswain didn't pull the boat back, you get that ramp right across your back and it'll kill you. Mm -hmm. so, you have to be careful. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well. Okay. Thank you so much for your interview. Well, thanks for asking. Your interest. Okay.